part of my definition of engineering, the way that I think about it, is engineering are the the kind of the, the guide rails that help us steer us in the direction mm -hmm. of the set of more likely to succeed solutions. So when we're talking about that kind of um I, I'm I was trying to avoid saying using this term, but top down approach to design of thinking about the context in which we want to place bits of the bits that we're trying to organize and think about um that seems still to be a function of engineering to me to to, to be able to think about uh, to think about these things in the right context so 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 one of the one of the bits of advice that from your book i think is see the whole picture and and so being able to think about things in the context in which they're going to be they're going to be placed and and understanding and this is again this dance between the macro and the micro level which seems so 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 important does that does that make is that is that a way that you would see it? so systems thinking is is a way of organizing our thinking to try and get us in the direction of, of of what's going to more likely to work for us, yeah, and uh, enabling the flow of information. So, yeah. you know, what we were because it makes me chuckle, right? That oh, the endless fights about architect, that word architect, yeah. engineer, and I I've gotten tired of them. Like you know, architect's a bullshit role, and hand, I'm a hands-on architect, right? They, so first of all, there are as many definitions of that word as there are people doing the practice right and yeah. and i do like everything like every good idea can be implemented into a horror show and vice versa right yeah. so um so i struggle with the word but more i struggle with the um our inability to def define it for me though um i think of it as a a facilitation, meaning um, I'm not the smartest person in the room. If I'm the smartest person in the room, I'm in the wrong room. Like I really <laughs> want to work with people who are brilliant at what they do. Yeah. And that I need the other people in the room. I have no actual value all by myself. Like, right? I and we need the 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 relationships between us are important yeah. for the system. And so some of us focus a lot more on um, implementation. Some of yeah. us focus more on the structure of knowledge flow and information across the system. Some of us make more artifacts that are in a spoken language and some of us make more artifacts that are in code. Mm -hmm. And for me, the architect and engineering I, I don't love the idea of, you know, you become a, a principal or a senior engineer, then you become an architect because most yeah. of what they're doing, I would say is engineering. And that's great. That's wonderful. Yeah. Like yeah. there is no hierarchy. There's more about, um, I spend a lot of time doing systems design, knowledge flow design, yeah. trying to make a repository of information that's useful to people that brings, can, how do you even see a capability in a system in the 700 decisions and ADRs yeah. evolved in it? Um, I think about that more than some of my um, engineering colleagues, but that is also part of self-organizing self as a team, right? And most of the people I work with that use the word engineer, yeah. uh, partly because of the work I do tends to require this skill set, but they're brilliant at the architecting part, right? Yeah. And so to some extent, it's like any household, there's a bunch of stuff that needs to get done and you sort of self-organize. I love doing the laundry and I hate doing the dishes, yeah, yeah. so I do yeah. more laundry. One of the things though that I think we need is to understand the way I mean systems architect, that there is a, um, a blind spot to that skill set that we often don't think it matters. So we don't 
value it as a skill set or we think it's not tech enough, it's not hands on enough. But if you've been in situations where no one is actually thinking about and, then mm -hmm. you know what happens. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. if the and is strictly a product requirement role, which it is not, that mm -hmm. is not all it is, right? So the more, the more people can synthesize information, the less need for very strong definitions of of what a role does and more, how do you get on with doing what needs to get done? I, 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 I agree. I, I, I think the labels that we apply, certain, certainly in this space, matter less, but they're, they're tools too. I, 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 tend to use, I tend to use the term engineer um, specifically in relation to um, you know other disciplines as a, a kind of metaphor for what for what what we do well, not really a metaphor I, I think i think it's an accurate description so 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 what what i'm thinking is that an engineer in it uh, the model that i have in my mind when i'm thinking of an engineer is somebody working at nasa designing a a, a mars rover that that kind of thing not somebody repairing mm -hmm. your car so it's not about technical skills it's about following a defined process it's kind of practical science it's following a defined rational process for organizing our thinking in a way that allows us to solve systemic as well as reductionist problems so i love this so i have a story i put it in the book because i like this so much that so i had a cat who got very ill and brought the cat to the vet who said, uh, nope, this is an emergency. You have to go to the emergency clinic. Four different veterinarians with very concrete, this is what's wrong with the cat, were wrong. One, one of them sent the cat home and the cat almost died. We brought it back. So the chief medical officer of that the place came in to me and said, hi, introduced himself and said, I'm going to work directly with you now. And then he started talking me through what they'd done, what they were doing. Now, I am not a veterinarian, and he used language that I had to look up some of the words he used later mm -hmm. to understand. But we get about five or 10 minutes into this, and I went, we're debugging the cat. And he's like, <laughs> what? And I'm like, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not a vet. Yeah. But I know this, this, yeah. I know this. And it was so much better because he said what the known, what the known knowns and yeah, the yeah, known yeah. unknowns. And it exactly what you're saying. It made me realize that it's a particular style of problem solving. Yeah. And we often confuse a more linear reductionistic style yes. with debugging the cat yeah right but when you're debugging the cat it's um tech agnostic yeah. to some extent yeah. but it couldn't debug the cat without medical expertise i can't debug yeah. a software system if i didn't understand the yes. you know how to code but it's 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 like a synergy of those or something right yeah. i think yeah yeah but but I, but but but, but. I guess this is self-evident, but but anybody that you know we'd think of as an expert, certainly in our discipline, you know, but probably in any discipline, is going to have a bunch of those kinds of rules of thumb, guidelines that they use, ways of organising their thinking. But particularly, especially, maybe vitally, being metacognitive about about these sorts of things, so that they they can kind of you know, think about the way that they think and try and organize their thoughts so that they're heading in the right direction rather than the wrong direction. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. So, so, so those those are the kinds of things that, that, that those are the things kind of, kind of things that particularly interest me. What what are the things that we can say are, are going to give us steer us in the direction of getting a better result? This clip was taken from my podcast, The Engineering Room, with Dave Farley. 
a monthly podcast with some of the brightest minds in software engineering. You can find full episodes on all your favourite podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts and Amazon Music. Your support helps us to bring you these regular episodes, so please leave your positive review on your preferred podcast platform to help us to continue to grow and bring you great guests and their insights. Thank you very much for listening.